Well, I was on uh, Mars Peach Girl's uh, channel, watched the, the, her, her latest video called We Love Books Tag, and she tagged everyone at the end of the video. So, I'm assuming this includes me, because I'm anyone watching. And so, here we go with the tag. It's about books. It apparently, it's for people who love books, and because I like books, I follow her. Uh, that's one of the uh, the things. Uh, but my book uh, fascination has gone beyond the average, so we'll see how this fa fares out. So uh, we'll do. I'm going to be doing the We Love Books tag. Um, this is here. What one book from your collection? Would you keep if the rest had to be thrown out or taken away? Just one book. Well, that's kind of that's kind of a, a bizarre question uh, for myself, anyways, because uh, my collection is now a library, and the way I've got my books to a certain degree, because I do have. Uh, see, uh, it, uh, it's hard to explain. Every library has in it hidden information that people don't want you to see. In other words, every library has a secret. And has secrets to things that really shouldn't be seen in the light of day up, or people don't want you to see the light of day up. Uh, or people don't want to see the light, ha have that be shown or seen the light of day. Uh, and I'm in this category, uh, I'm at a point now where my collection is so large that it is now a library. Uh, and sections of it are impossible to be thrown away or taken away. But because I am a library builder, and I've been doing this for so many years, even if sections of the library are wiped out, it's not a problem for me to go back and rebuild that section of the library. Because that's what I do every day anyways. So, I, I live in a library. I live in my labs. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's going to sort of put the, that uh, question in perspective. Um, each time you read, uh, do you have something to munch on uh, or to drink uh, next to you? Well, uh, I think this should answer your question here. Here's a cup of uh, juice. Uh, so, yeah, next to me, but uh, I'm one of those type of people, uh, again, off the beaten path. Uh, I consider food to be part of the library, because you have a whole culinary section, and being Greek and from the Greek and the Middle Eastern background, the Greek-Syrian background, uh, I have enough restaurateurs in my family that it was not that difficult for me to build a small little restaurant inside my place. And so I have <laughs> not only some food and drink next to me, but I've got an entire uh, <laughs> little restaurant next to me. So if I want to go out for a nice, uh, you know, a sub or, or, or a pizza or uh, let's say a, like a roast beef sandwich or something like that, uh, it's not an issue because all I have to move do is move over a couple feet uh, and I'm in my restaurant. Uh, in my restaurant, I can do all the Asian dishes. I can do all the uh, the Syrian dishes, all the Greek dishes. Um, uh, I can do uh, uh, fried chicken. Uh, I've got a smoker out back uh, where I can do ribs uh, or anything anything else on the barbecue. And it's not a gas barbecue. I build and restore charcoal wood barbecues. Uh, and I, my dad, lo I built one for my dad, he loves the way I do my barbecues because uh, it brings heat the way, and control of heat, the way no other barbecue has. So, but it also gives you the good flavor of the wood. Of, of the wood. So, in terms of eating, uh, add your Greek and Syrian cultures, add your food cultures, uh, and add that to the library, and then yeah, you've got your you got sorry you've got a picture of uh, uh, of the food around here. Um, now it says love of books. When did it start, and what was your fir the, what was one of your first the first books that you read? Well, 
ironically, I ended up I ended up growing up in the library. My dad uh, has his PhD, and uh, if any of you know any of the uh, research libraries, uh, they're often very small one room research libraries. Well, that's what my dad had built in the in, in the earlier on in the house, and I played uh, from from when I was little, from six years old on up. My favorite place to play was inside my dad's my dad's library, and I would pick up uh, a variety of different books, the medical books, the theological books, uh, and basically go through and read in the library and, and pretend that I was a research librarian. So <laughs> that was. That was that. That's sort of uh, where I first got my start, and it just sort of continued all the way through. Um, let's see here. Uh, one book you would never go back and and reread ever. Uh, I found there. I don't know if there's any book I wouldn't go back and reread ever. Uh, putting that sort of connotation on it. It's uh, the question. Of ma the question in terms of what I read and when I read it is a matter of time. You know, do I have the time to go back and read something, and whether or not in my library it comes across my path again. Sometimes I'm in the same section of the library over and over again, so I do read certain books over and over again. And other times I'm not in that section of the library for even up to a year to two years, and so I haven't read that book for for a while. Uh, and sort of, it, it kind of, there are books that have kind of gotten lost in my collection, you know, in the library in the different st stacks, and, and they, um, it's 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 now gone to stacks rather than simply uh, a, a collection. I think I have uh, between my computer network and the actual physical books they have. I have something close to 50,000 different books, so you can make that what you will in terms of the size of my library. Uh, you can go from there. Uh, let's see. Mm. And this, I get, this is a question, but it just pops up. Uh, uh, it just pops up. Uh, it says, very romantic or very full of action? Um... N neither and both. <laughs> uh, I do read fiction, fiction from time to time, but I don't read fiction as much as I used to. But even when I do go back and I read fiction, it's not in the same manner that I read fiction before. A lot of times, particularly when you're dealing with older books, I'm talking about pre-1960s, Information was hidden in the books, particularly in stories, about events that were going on at the time that could not openly be discussed, but were buried in the, in the story in the book. So you can use the book to go back and decode sections of history as a historical, as a, as sort of a historical detective uh, that would not normally be out in the open. And so it brings an entirely different point of view to reading. The second thing that brings an entirely different point of view of reading is if you understand writing to be the experience of the author, and that every author puts sections and uh, bits of themselves in terms of their own psychology, their own behavior, their own characteristics within the book in terms of the, how the, they, they lay their characters out, then you can go back and use the book to decode a person's life, the author's life, and gain some of the experiences that the author is sharing with you through their imagination. So again, so very romantic or very full, uh, or very full of action. It's neither or both. Because uh, it, it, it's not reading in the manner that the average person reads anymore. This is now, for me, more of a detective story. Even though I do, I find some of the stuff enjoyable in terms of a leisurely thing. But even when I'm doing the work, my research work, it's not as if uh, these are things that I have to do. These, it, it's like a massive puzzle. That a li building a library is like a massive puzzle. 
the pieces are literally scattered all over the world, and you've got to pull, pull all these pieces in. And then once you have the pieces uh, that you think you want or are or, or, or sufficient, then you have to start putting together a picture, and that forms your library. And the manner in which you put together this picture, this puzzle, this library puzzle, really determines the quality of, the, of your library and what you can do with your library. So it leads you into action, it leads you into adventure, it leads you into uh, things that you would not normally see uh, and or, or considered to be library work. Right? So it's not their standard librarian that you're just sort of sitting there uh, quietly in, 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 the, uh, in, the, in the library reading on sh and all you're doing is wiggling around with a carton putting books back on our shelf. This isn't, isn't that at all. This is investigation, uh, full-on detective work within the library to find information, understanding that have been either lost or forgotten or hidden. So this is the perspective of library. This of library research. This is where I come in from library uh, from library research. It's library science, uh, and this is how it connects to all the other research that I'm doing here on a daily basis. And I spend usually about uh, 10 to 12 hours. 12 hours is the average day uh, that I spend studying and reading. Uh, it's kind of like being in school for the rest of your life. Uh, and this is uh, end of a book. Cliffhanger or no cliffhanger? Well, I think the last uh, the last uh, question and the last sort of bits there that a answered that to some degree. Uh, cliffhanger again? Yes or no? Because while the book may have an ending, if you're doing research on an author and you want to understand what the author is, you have to read all of his books to see where his different influences were. In other words, uh, there's going to be a difference between the author's first book and the last book. Uh, there's going to be different views from between the first and the last book. And different influences. You can see how maybe the writer grows as an author as he gets older, but you can also see points where he has times he begins to struggle writing. He has a hard time with, with it. Uh, and in a certain case, because you see things at different ages, you can see the age of the author within the writing. So again, cliffhanger or no cliffhanger? Depends on what you're looking at. Depends on how far you're going in with your research. Are you looking at something that's hidden? that's not supposed to be seen. In other words, you, when you're looking at this stuff, you've you kind of got it hidden yourself because you know you're not supposed to be looking at it or someone's, someone's going to get upset about this. Uh, are you bringing out history that's, or looking at history that's long forgotten and that when it's brought out, it may not be appreciated for what it is. You know, there is bits of history that people don't want to be seen ever again. Uh, and so this will determine whether or not what you're doing is a cliffhanger or not or not a cliffhanger. Um, big books or small books? Well, I've gone beyond big books and small books, as you can tell, because I'm talking about an entire library now. I'm not talking about simply a collection. I'm talking about the entire library, working and in, 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 in reading the entire library. The entire library is what I read. This is the entire book, the entire picture. And each book is just simply a part of the library. So as you go through book by book by book, going through the library, organizing the library, uh, doing, going out and finding books for the library, uh, this all sort of meshes together in terms of big, small, cliffhanger, not cliffhanger, action or romance. It, it, there's a whole variety of things out there that mix within and makes a library. Uh, my personal enjoyment, in terms of what I seem to really enjoy in the uh, the genres, is not either romance or action, but rather, uh, if you look at the Victorian authors, there was a lot of writing in many in many ways. Uh, I guess they call it descriptive or narrative, where you basically it's like you're reading somebody's diary. And this kind of gives you, again, more insight to not only the characters, but when and where it was written. So, yeah. Uh, this is 
only one genre mixture of that kind of because I'm talking about a library now and not a single book that kind of uh, we've not I haven't been talking about one genre we're talking about more or less everything the whole thing uh, particularly when they've got stacked it's no longer a genre of, of do you have a, a collection you know a section that there, there are whole stacks that are different sections <laughs> so um, olden day books present day or future uh, you know, Victorian era type books, present, you know, dystopian, they talk about that type of thing. Uh, again, it ha there's a mixture of things, but the preference is, and this is where it should be, uh, if you're reading modern books, if you're a person who enjoys reading, and all you've read are the modern books like uh, uh, Harry Potter, uh, Hunger Games and all these different type of books that are now more popular, and you've stuck simply to the popular stuff. There is a huge chunk of stuff that you're missing. Huge. The better books were actually written before 1990. There was a massive change in the way people view things around the 1990s. And reading, in many ways, was a lot more adventurous because of what was written and how it was written. After the 1990s, things kind of just sort of... Uh, they, they, they collapsed a little bit, but more or less what you have right now in terms of the writing is you have more of those, what they call the, the trash novels, the Harlequin romances. This is what you have in terms of the reading quality. After the 1990s, you really don't have the uh, statements and the presentation that you had in the earlier books. And, and the thing is, the early, even as you get into it, uh, it ends, the, the period really ends in the 1960s, but it doesn't, it, it, it sort of trails out and then finally ends in the 1990s where you really don't get any good books. As you can tell for me, books are a complex issue because I'm not talking about a small bookshelf collection of books. I'm talking about an entire library. This is where I live. This is what I've been doing for the last 20 years now. Uh, so it's not a matter of this and that anymore. It's a matter of, uh, as I said, looking at the books that will basically grow my library and grow the research, grow that larger picture. And the number of books out there uh, compared to the, the newer books, uh, the older books are actually the better books. The newer books have mixed up information in them. They sort of they're, what happens is the newer books borrow, in many cases, uh, from the older books, without telling you that they're borrowing from the older books. Uh, this is particularly in the case of uh, uh, Harry Potter's author, who actually didn't actually create the story of Harry Potter. It was a pre-created story, something that had been floating around, but not really fully put together. Uh, so what she did is she took the character that was in other books uh, that was called, in this character was called Harry Potter, and built an entire uh, story around that one main character. So her idea is that ideas, uh, even when you look at uh, the Hunger Games, these ideas are not necessarily born in isolation. The Hunger Games borrows heavily from George Orwell. And you can look at 1984, you can look at Animal Farm, uh, and you can really draw parallels between these bo those two books, which are quintessential, and if, you, if you're going into politics, you have to read these books. Uh, they are the definitive books that really shaped the Hunger Games. Anything that's dystopian really borrows heavily on Animal Farm and more to a, a, more, a, a, a greater degree, uh, 1984. These George Orwell, these Orwellian books, really uh, had an impact on society, and have influenced a lot of uh, a lot of uh, 
present day writers. So again, you have to look at, at the uh, influence of present day writers to see that they do they understand what was written in the past, or have they read it and really sort of missed the point, and their books are a a reflection of this misunderstanding of what actually occurred in the earlier book. So this the last question comes out the, the it says. Uh, Katniss or Hermione, neither for me. Uh, it's not any particular issue for me in terms of one favorite character or another. Uh, standalone or a series. The way I ended up reading this stuff, because everything is all connected to each other, everything, even the standalone is a series, because it has connections to other things. So we get down to the last one. Who else? Who am I going to tag for this? Well, I'm going to leave this out to everyone, anyone who watches this. So this tag is for anyone and everyone out there who loves to read. And if you have any questions for me about how I built my library, feel free to ask.